welcome back. I've mentioned it before on the channel, but in the variety of different things I do to make a living in music, one of the more underrated tasks is fixing up drums for local schools and churches. Plenty of times this is just reheading drums, but occasionally it goes a little beyond that. I was recently approached by a local middle school to restore a number of snares they use in the concert band, and also help consolidate some of their expansive inventory of drums collected over the last 50 to 60 years. So in this video, I'll be fixing up five of these snares to send back to the school, along with one of these old Ludwig marching snares. The rest of these drums, I'll get to take off their hands to keep, use for projects, or get rid of at my own discretion. So to start out, I ordered a bunch of Evans heads and snare cord from Sweetwater for both the top and bottom of each of these six drums I'd be fixing up. I made a separate video about this, but if you're not aware of Diodario's Players Circle program, you can register codes from each of these products for points to redeem towards free equipment, swag, and other accessories. I won't waste too much time digging into that, but for this order, it was well worth my time to input all of these codes, so I'd encourage you to check it out or watch the video on my channel to learn more about it. In addition to drum heads and snare cord, we also decided to replace all the throw-offs on these snares because if there's one thing that wears out on these older Ludwig drums, it's those original P85 throw-offs. In recent years, Ludwig has begun to offer a reliable and durable replacement that fits the same hole pattern, the Ludwig P88. With these drums being used in a school on a daily basis, by kids who probably are not the most gentle on the equipment, I felt like this was the best choice to keep these drums functioning long term. Each of these cost $44, and I'm sure they'll help these drums survive for another 50 to 60 years. So now, with all my parts in, it was time to start fixing up these drums one by one. The first snare up on the workbench was this 60s Made in Japan Lyra snare. This one is the lone of the bunch that won't be getting a new throw off, because this drum is really a reserve backup in the case one of the other four snares goes down before a concert or rehearsal. This drum was pretty easy to clean up, after I stripped the heads and wires, I took the shell and sprayed it with some soapy water just to get rid of some of the grime and surface buildup, and then I added some drum dial bearing edge conditioner to the big roundover edges. This probably isn't a huge deal if you skip, but I like to add it on those older drums to keep those edges protected and smooth. I then moved my attention over to the hoops and just went over them briefly with some steel wool to get rid of some light rust. Then I could get the new heads seated and tuned up. As I added each tension rod, I used some white lithium grease to keep the threads turning smoothly, and even though this takes some extra time, it's totally worth it, especially on these older drums. I used a drill to bring down the tension rods, but rest easy, I did not actually make contact with the rim while using the drill. This is strictly to get the rods close to making contact, and then I switched to tightening by hand. After this, I could simply rinse and repeat for the other side, and then get the snare wires back on and get this drum off the bench and move on to the next. The next drum up was this 1990s Ludwig Acrylite Black Galaxy finish, or more commonly known as the Blackrolite. This drum was much the same process as the previous, except since this was a metal shell, I didn't really need to go through the same process of cleaning up a wrap or adding anything to the bearing edges. For this drum though, and the rest going forward, I did need to add a new throw off. One thing that bothers me about these new P88 throws is the butt plate. From my experience using them and trying them on a variety of older Ludwig drums, the butt plate doesn't actually work as a replacement for a number of them. The whole pattern doesn't line up, so in this case, I wasn't able to use it on this drum. The snare throw is a perfect fit, however, and works much better than the older P85. Once I had the new hardware mounted, I went over to the shell with a microfiber cloth and then began the process of reheading cleaning up hoops, and greasing tension rods as I reassembled. The next drum up on the bench was this 1980s Ludwig Superphonic. After I had this one stripped, I did spend some time removing the labels, decals, and adhesive on the shell, and then again began the same process of replacing the throw-off, and in this case, the butt plate. Then I moved on to reheading, cleaning up the rims, and tuning up and moving on to the next. And on to the next drum, it was another Superphonic, but this time from the 1960s. Again, it was the exact same process, and by this time, I had really gotten into a groove of getting through all these steps pretty quickly and efficiently. As I made my way to the final drum, it was time to work on this 1970s Ludwig Superphonic. 
It's been an amazing time capsule working on all these Ludwig snares here. And in the process, I worked on one drum from the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. And if there's one thing I can say about all these drums, they are built to last a lifetime other than the throw-offs. So once I had this drum with new throw, heads, and cleaned up, I could shift my attention over to the final part of this project. In the initial lot of drums I picked up from the school, there was a set of nine Ludwig marchers, mostly with this unique dual-colored wrap. I personally love this finish, and my old high school used to have a set of these with blue and silver stripes. After talking with the band director, we decided to turn one of these into a parade field drum for the concert band, but he was hoping to have it not be so loud visually. I decided to pick one of the drums where the wrap was already in poor shape to strip and refinish. And I'll probably keep one of these drums that's wrap is in better shape for myself. After I had the shell stripped, I took this up to my garage to use my heat gun and a scraper to get this wrap off. I've stripped wrap on plenty of drums, and on most of them, the adhesive is just near the edges and seams. But on this drum, it was almost entirely around the shell, which made this pretty hard to remove. I was able to get it off after a while, but I could already foresee a lot of time sanding to get rid of the adhesive on the shell. I continued to use the heat gun and scraper to work off as much adhesive as I could, but finally shifted over to this orbital sander with the real coarse grade of sandpaper. I spent maybe 45 minutes sanding, so thank God for noise-canceling headphones and a good podcast to keep me entertained. After I had a nice clean shell, I came back with a much finer grade of sandpaper to prep this drum for stain, and then I cleaned it off with a damp paper towel to remove any dust. I used a rag to apply some stain and went over this shell a couple times to get a nice, smooth, consistent finish. After the stain was dry, I moved the shell over to my Lazy Susan wheel to begin the process of applying polyurethane. Over the next day, I applied four coats, allowing a few hours between each to dry. After that, I could take this drum back downstairs to reassemble. I added some bearing edge conditioner to these edges, as it was a wood shell, and this drum also got a new P88 to take it up a notch. After I had this one back together, this project was finished. A week later, I packed these drums up and took them back to the school, but as you can see when I got back home, I was sent home with two more drums to find something to do with. So if anybody has any ideas for a fun project I can do with any of these drums I was given, leave a comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to stay up to date on future video releases. And until next time, thanks.